Well, thanks, Raja, uh, attending this uh, demo session. Welcome you back. You so, let me give you some quick expectations for the session. So, we are going to talk about what do you mean by in memory and why in memory and what is HANA? What are the different key capabilities of HANA when it comes to the technically what we can do with HANA? And finally, we'll see what are the different options we have for customers, the customers who are using ERP systems or even warehouse systems. So that's the basic uh, expectations for the session. Now as a date, nowadays we are getting different business demands and different requirements from the customer. But some customer says, as if you are referring to any data warehouse, always there will be a data latency or data delay of one day. because. Today, whatever the data you have in your OLTB system, the online transaction processing system, that data will be available only tomorrow. After the business hours, you need to pull all the data and that data will be available for analysis. So there is a one day delay when you want to do from some kind of analysis. Now some customer says, I don't want to wait. What are the data I'm looking in my OLTB systems? I want to see the same data for my analytics. And some other customer says, what are the reports I'm looking in my, my desktop or laptop? I want to see the same in my mobile. So that's what we call mobility. And some customer says, as I have some huge amount of data, my data volume is uh, due to huge. So I need to have some in-memory database. I don't want to use the traditional database. So like this, we are getting different business demands and different voices from the customers nowadays. To address all these kind of business demands, as and did, we don't have much tool. There is only one tool for from SAP perspective. That's what we call and the basic prescription is SAP HANA. Now before that, we need to understand, before coming to the HANA, we need to understand why particularly we are talking about in-memory. If you see 2012, it was a huge hype for in-memory. We used to say in-memory, big data. These two words are pretty, pretty uh, hype words in 2012. But when it comes, sorry, it was a 2011. But 2012 is the ideal year where it's reality. All vendors, they come up with their own uh, solutions and their own products. For example, when you talk about SAP, they launched SAP HANA, which is an in-memory solution. Say when it comes to the Oracle, you got uh, Exadata, Exalix. And uh, from EMC Square, you got Greencom. Like this, different vendors, they come up with their, their own products. So that's the reason. When we say 2012 is ideally, it's a reality. Now 2013 is a new year which we are going to expect a lot of lot of new projects in uh, this in-memory space. So as the, there is a one uh, consulting firm which we used to, where they used to do some uh, research in IT, so that Ghana group. So as they forecasted, there will be a demand of HANA consultant across the globe by the year of ending 2014. A minimum we need 30k HANA consultant across the globe. So that's the forecasted version what Ghana is saying. Now coming back to our business, so let's talk about why in-memory processing. On the left hand side, there is a one table which talks about the price, how gradually it has decreased when you, when you say RAM or hard disk or flash drives. If you want to purchase one MB RAM in the midst of 90s, it was around $30. But now if you want to purchase one MB RAM, it's negligible. So eventually if you see the hardware cost has been slashed down and reduced like anything. This is the graph. And the second reason, if you see for each component, we have some speed here. For example, we have CPU. In the year 1990, we, it was 0.05 MIPS. But now it's 7.15, which is almost 143x faster. Same applies for main memory, which is 250x. Accessible memory, 2 power 40x. Network speed, 100x. Disk transfer, 25x faster, which means to summarize, 
this seed is growing slower than all other hardware components while the need for speed is increasing. The another motivated factor why particularly we are talking about in memory nowadays. Now whatever the data you have in your system, when you are trying to execute any report, what it does is it will go back to your server in there. From hard disk, you are going to pull all the data. Assume a scenario where you have some huge amount of data, 1 billion records. I need to see my data when I say 1 billion records. Just imagine from going back to your hard disk, when it is going to pull from the hard disk, obviously it will be a huge bottleneck in the past. When you are talking about a 1 billion, 10 billion records, 50 billion records, so obviously it will take a lot of time. So for that reason, now what we are using is the new paradigm, we call it as a in memory. So the main memory is nothing but your RAM. So whatever the data you need for your business analysis or business transactions for your operational needs, you are going to dump everything into your main memory, which is nothing but RAM. And with a special software and with a special hardware, we are going to manage this in memory solution. And whenever if you are trying to execute any report, rather it is going back to your hard disk, instead of that, it is going to pull from your RAM. So that's what we call in memory. Now, what do you mean by in memory? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> An in memory database is the database management system that primarily relies on main memory for computing data storage. So which you are going to keep all your data into RAM as opposite to querying data which is stored in your physical hard disk. So all business intelligence reporting tools or any applications can do the reporting and pull all the data from the RAM so that it is going to get huge performance. So in addition to providing incredibly the fast query response times, in-memory analytics can reduce or eliminate the need for data indexing and storing pre-aggregated data. So typically when you are talking about uh, traditional databases and uh, data warehouses where we used to store all our data while storing that you will be having the indices and even pre-aggregated. So that kind of all things we are not able to do right now when we are talking about with the advantages of in-memory. Now if you are going just instead of dumping all your data, hard is if you are going to keep in RAM, are you going to get performance? No. By taking all the advantages of in-memory applications, what we are going to do is, whatever the application, when you say the basic calculations or computations, you refer any SAP systems or any system, you will be having three layers, starting with your database, application, and presentation. In the past, we used to take place all our calculations, manipulations in the application layer. Now, what we are trying to do is, it was a huge burden in the past. Now, with the taking all the advantages of in-memory, we are completely pushing down from application layer down to database. Do whatever the calculations, manipulations in your database and simply transfer your results to your application layer. So this way we are going to get a huge performance. Now let's try to understand what you mean by HANA. HANA is a pre-packed and pre-configured appliance that is ready to run the in-memory database on a multi-core processor hardware with a terabytes of a memory. So why it's HANA, not something else? Because the person who owned and who provided the solution is known as Heso Platinum. So initially they want to name this new tool as a Hasso new architecture, which is a very lengthy to make it short. They have taken H A from Hasso, N from new, A from architecture. All together it's HANA. It's basically moreover when you say HANA, it's an analytical appliance where you got a in-memory SAP software and a special SAP hardware. Moreover when you say HANA, it's a in-memory database technology which typically supports your SQL, MDX and there is a new interface which supports only for business intelligence 4, that's what we call BIX, business intelligence consumer services. So pretty simple when you want to understand what you mean by HANA in a one statement, HANA is an in-memory database as well an analytical 
of layers. Simple. The other reason why we call it as a HANA, it's high performance analytics of layers. It's a technology which allows the processing of massive quantities of real-time data in the main memory of the server to provide immediate results from analysis and transactions. So at a high level, if you want to understand, this is your HANA appliance. And on top, in source, you, you can see there is a, some source systems. We call it as a business suit. When you say SAP business suit, that may be your typical all business OLTB systems, what we call SAP ECC system, or CRM, or SCM, that is supply chain management, suppliers relationship management. So any system, any typical OLTB system, or any data warehouse, or any third party system apart from SAP. So you are going to get all the data from different sources and pump into HANA for reporting on top, you will do with the use of business objects, HANA supports only BO4, the latest version is BO4, or any third party tools you can use that. So here you are pulling all the data, pumping into HANA, do the data processing here, manipulate, do whatever the things you want and generate all the reports in business objects or any third party. Now the technology what we are going to use is when you say hardware technology, we have a huge innovations. We are going to use a technology called multi-core architecture. For example, in you say when, when we say one server, in server you will be having one CPU. For each CPU, you will be having a plate. In each plate, you can accommodate eight processors. If I am using five CPUs multiplied by eight, which will be 40 processors you are going to use. Like that, you can scale out. There is no uh, such limitation or something. So right now HANA supports 100 terabytes of a memory. Based on the configuration you need according to your requirements, you can buy your appliance. For buying appliance, always you need to buy this HANA appliance from the certified hardware partners who are known as Intel, HP, IBM, Cisco, Fujitsu, Dell. So these are the hardware partners for SAP. You need to buy appliance before uh, deploying any HANA projects, HANA systems, you need to purchase from these guys. And coming to the software side, we got a huge innovations, that's what we call a row and columnar store. As you know traditionally, when we say table, you are going to keep all your data in the row fashion. So that's the reason why we call it as a column tables. But by default, by default, you are going to use tables as columnar stores, which we are going to store all the data in the column passion, so which is saving a lot of time and a lot of memory also for the faster access of the query. With that, whatever the compression, whatever the partitioning you do, it's 100% and no aggregated tables, which means whatever the data you have in your source systems without any further modifications, you are going to get the same dump and pump into HANA. Because when you say data warehouse environment where you used to move your data Accordingly, based on your business logics, you need to transform your data level to level. That's the technology. Now, let's talk about the proof point or test case. So, before introducing HANA, SAP has tested by taking a huge amount of data on a customer called Unilever, Hindustan Unilever Limited, what we call earlier. So, now it's what we call Hindustan Unilever Limited, HLL. Earlier it was a HLL, right now we call it as a HUL. So majority of the consumer products, if you take in India, the REN, Colgate, all this are nothing but Colgate, uh, this, uh, what do you call it, uh, HUL products. It's basically consumer products. See the amount of data what we are re referring. It's a 460 billion records and 50 terabytes of a data. To process earlier without HANA, it was taking around 77 minutes. The same with HANA, it has taken only 13 seconds and query is written back in 0.04 seconds. See the amount of data what we are re referring. It's a 70 retailers and with a 460 billion records and 50 terabytes of a data. When you do query on that, where query is responding back in 0.04 seconds. So that's the reason why we call HANA as a super duper fast and you are going to get all your results in a real time. 
Now, how you are going to get your data from different sources into HANA? You name it your SAP or non-SAP, any system. We are going to use three methods to pull data from different sources to HANA. That's one what we call trigger-based replication. In your source system, you are going to do some configuration. Once it is made, after that, what are the data you are going to pull? It's real-time data. So that is trigger-based replication. The other method, with the use of a ETL tool called Business Objects Data Services, you are going to pull from SAP or non-SAP, but that is not a real-time replication. The type is what we call ETL-based replication, and you are going to use your VODS as an ETL tool, and you are going to pull all the data from source to HANA. And remember, these two we are pulling from application layer. The third mechanism, we have log-based replication. It's directly you are pulling from the database with the use of log files. So again, this is a real time. This is not a real time replication. When you say replication, how you are going to get your data from source to HANA? And once you pull, once you put all the data pump into HANA, on top of that data, virtually, you are going to create some views. The way how you are going to represent your master data is nothing but what we call attribute view. This one. And the way how you are going to represent your master and transaction data, that's nothing but analytical view. Typically, in any data warehouse, we call it as a cubes, info cubes. And whenever if you have some complex requirements where you need to customize, you need to write down some piece of code to get that requirement, then we'll go with calculation view. So to provide some security for this views, we use privileges. And for the reusable purpose, we use procedures. And with these procedures, only you are going to push down the burden what you have in application layer down to database. So these are the essential modeling and provisioning are the provisioning other word what we call is extraction. Things what we can do with HANA. And when it comes to the reporting, either you need to use business objects or any third party tool. So what are the data you have in your HANA? On top of that, you have created your views here. And the same views we are going to consume in the reporting layer. So when you say reporting business objects, we got a different reporting tools based on your requirement, your customer requirement. Some customer says, I want to see some ad hoc reporting. Then simply use your web -I. Some customer says, I want to see some dashboards. So then dashboard using dashboard designer, you are going to create your queries. And Crystal Reports has got that ability. It can talk to any database directly. So that's the reason why Crystal is appearing two places here. And moreover, Crystal Reports are used for formatting purpose. It's a pixel perfect formatting. At the same time, for the printing purpose, what are the reports we are looking in uh, different technologies or even SAP? So when it comes to the printing, it was always a big headache for the customers. Provide that in Crystal Reports, we got all the features. You can print the reports as you like. And Explorer is another tool. Whenever if you want to see some data with a huge amount of data, you name it 10 billions, 100 billions, 20 billions, 150 billions, you can see that data. And in the past, no reporting tool provide this facility where you can knock out and you can look the different insights of a business. And apart from that, we have analysis office, which is uh, moreover, which is very much similar to your uh, Excel uh, based interface. Now, let's talk about the equations. When you say enterprise data warehouse, you are using your BW, you are running your SAP, your uh, data warehouse PW system. The basically when you say PW system, that is nothing but data warehouse solution from SAP. That's what we call PW system. Our data warehouse systems and typical SAP systems are running on top of the databases, which is uh, in memory database. Sorry, we are talking about a classical enterprise. It's correction. All our SAP, our data warehouse systems are running on traditional databases. Now, the change is that we are going to replace with the traditional database with HANA. If you see here, for BW, right now BW is running on top of HANA. 
same applies for all ERP systems also. Now if you want to replace your traditional database with as a in-memory database, what we call HANA. And going forward, the vision of SAP is to have one common database. It's only one database, one common database. And on top, you can run multiple SAP, non-SAP systems. So that's the future version of HANA, what we are going to expect in the probably 2014. So that's what they call transformations. Now let's talk about the roadmap. So HANA started with 1.0. After that, we got a support pack 1, support pack 2, service pack 3, 4, 5. When we got SP 1.3, this option is available. Where for any, I mean to say, for business warehouse system, if you want to run on top of HANA, we can do that. 1.4, 1.5, we got this option for SAP business suite systems also. Again, when you say business suite systems, that may be your SAP ECC, CRM, SEM, SRM, all the systems. On top of HANA, you can run your BW system or any SAP business suite system. But for one common database, we are waiting for the next version, which is HANA 2.0. Once you get that, and with the use of one common database, you can run multiple SAP or non-SAP systems. That's the future uh, version of HANA. With that, when you talk about the enterprise data warehouse equations, enterprise data warehouse is equals to your traditional database as X, where is X is equals to BW, and traditional database is replaced as a HANA. <coughs> now it's no more, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it's no more traditional database. The traditional database is we are going to replace as a HANA. When you say enterprise data warehouse, you are HANA plus Y, where Y is equals to new BW. HANA is replaces your traditional database management system, but not your data warehouse environment. And always remember, HANA complements and renovates BW system always. Now, what are the options we have for ERP customers? When you say ERP, it's a OLTP system. So we are running on top of some traditional database or ERP systems. Now the change is that, now what if, if your customer says, I don't want to replace or migrate my traditional database. I want to keep my traditional database aside. Then keep your traditional database aside, keep HANA aside, and pull all the data from if, uh, that traditional database to HANA on top with the use of business objects, do your reporting. Same when it comes to the other scenario, this is what we call side-by-side -side scenario and this is what we call is on top. You are not going to use your traditional database, you are completely eliminating and you are migrating with HANA on top, you are running your business objects. So this is the option for ERP customers. This is side-by-side uh, -side scenario and this is your on top scenario. Now options for BW customers, when you say side by side, keep your traditional database aside, BW aside, and keep your HANA aside, pull all the data from your traditional database to directly HANA, and on top with the use of business objects, you can do that reporting, so this is your side by side, and on top, you are going to replace your traditional database with HANA. Before that, you need to make sure that are you using the latest version of BW. So right now it's SAP NetViewer BW 7.3 with the support pack 5 or higher. So that version is only supported by HANA. If not, first you need to, if you are using the older version, you need to upgrade your older version to the latest version and then start migrating your traditional database to HANA. So these are the options which means without re-implementation, without any disturbance in your current landscape, you are going to have HANA in place. So this is your side-by-side -side scenario and this is your on top scenario. Now, if you want to understand at a high level how a basic SAP HANA landscape looks like. So this is your HANA appliance. It's appliance, your HANA. And 
we are going to use one software what we call is the client SAP studio in memory studio or information modeler or even HANA studio we are referring to the same tool using this you are going to perform all your modeling and provisioning activities and apart from that using this tool you are going to do basic administration for your database also and this is your source systems this is your BODS this is your reporting tools so this is a high level diagram for your HANA landscape for the same irrespective of what are the experience you have SAP says HANA is broadly divided into two areas one is application another one is technology the guys are, who are having some good understanding of database or data warehouse directly they can fit under application and the guys who are familiar with some kind of a database or data warehouse administration moreover it's a DBA kind of a role those guys will be fit under technology so right now we fit under application so which SAP offers HA100, HA300 which is a 5 days workshop the same content I'm going to cover and when you say if you are related to BW after this you need to go for this which is a bit on HANA so as you don't have BW experience so this is not uh, required for you but essentially it's what we call a standalone HANA HA100 and HA300 and area is application that's it uh, guys from my end well so far good and uh, this is this was a um, PowerPoint presentation do we get this or no yeah I'll share you I, I could hear no I'll share it to you okay you. thanks it, on that, some versions are missing. So, uh, is there a way we can get uh, any other document where we, both versions are supported, not supported, things like that, more in detail? Uh, no, ready-madely, okay. unfortunately, no. But, uh, okay. let me show you something, how we are going to, what kind of a things you are going to get for our training. So, like this. The next session I'm going to start with the basics because few guys will be not familiar with uh, the basics of uh, uh, what you mean by data warehouse, database, so those kind of things. So like this, for each individual session, you're going to have a class PPTs which I'm going to share with you and then we're going to talk about the in-memory basics and after that the use cases, we'll see what, what, what is that and HANA architecture, it's a deep dive of understanding the HANA architecture then look on free then we are going to start on the system the system demonstration starts from here modeling how we are going to create the attribute views analytical views then how we are going to process it and we are going to talk about one real-time scenario which is controlling and profitability analysis so like that we are going to talk about the SQL path portion also and uh, finally we will be ending with reporting HANA, reporting in HANA it is uh, using PO and apart from that for practicing purpose you got all the exercises here with the solutions just you can uh, have a practice you can do that and virtually it's a remote desktop connection what you are going to get and apart from this class materials I used to send a lot of materials through Dropbox I used to share all these materials and there is a three parts of notes which talks about the basics of HANA we started with basics And then it's purely the process and what are the things we are demonstrating in the class we are going to get the same here started with the, the basic process and screenshots step by step so what is step one step two step three like that so see there we are at uh, page number 21 now if you go down down it's all the screenshots and wherever the theory is relevant it will be there and it's moreover the screenshot is 
uh, because why I included theory means it's related to that step itself. So that's the reason you have a lot of stuff here. So see there. And by the end, we are going to talk about the user management. It's a little bit certification point of view. We can expect some questions, but in the reality, you are not going to work under that uh, user management. So like this, you are going to get three parts of a notes along with all these class materials and uh, in fact even assignments. So those, those are the takeaways for you and whenever after the training also you can review. So through Dropbox I'm going to share with you. Yes, uh, you have any questions Rajay? No, no, that's so far Hey, uh, do you have any problem with your internet? Because uh, earlier it was good, but now it's your voice is breaking. No. No, I think we are okay. Okay, now it's okay. Yeah, now it's perfect. Maybe because they say broadband, you know, sometimes users yeah, they sometimes start never list, guess, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah there may be some yeah. bottlenecks, you know. <laughs> they, 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 they promised to give us, you know, at least one, two megabits per second, but you know, we never, we know, Come we don't on. get any. You US still, you guys are using 1MB, 2MBs. Oh my god. No. See, 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 you've got to pay more, <laughs> right? Oh, oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, it will be too expensive because uh, I had some very bad experience in uh, Scotland. Uh, I'm not familiar the way how uh, works uh, the pricing model there, so without knowing, just I, the travel is around uh, six months I need to stay there. So simply the day one itself, I am taking some uh, huge, uh, you know, prepaid card and uh, when I using all the videos, watching everything, but unfortunately within three days, I, it got over. I, I got shocked, you know. <laughs> then uh, I came to know, okay, this is not the way how we use in India. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, uh, Yeah, are you trying to speak something? Because uh, no, 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 no. So you just those uh, documents. Uh, I have access, or are you gonna share? You said you're gonna share. No, I'm. I'm going to share you. Yeah. yeah okay. So let me uh, confirm your timing. So which you are going to take it? So are you going to yeah, take it? See, uh, Please go ahead. I would try to attend a regular basis. I understand it's not one whole package delivered at one time. It's rather, you know, to digest it, you need some time to, you know, if it is a shorter session, there'll be uh, what do you call it? a bore or whatever. That word I'm looking exactly. at, you know, lack of words. Uh, if it is short, uh, you also can deliver better and we can get some time to understand on each individual test. Uh, that way you gain more rather getting exactly. all pushed at one time. Uh, it's, it's good for everyone, but it's just that, you know, timing is an issue. But I would try, I would try. Wednesdays is not possible for me, uh, but other days I would try. Okay. Okay. Whenever if you are getting absent but, uh, that day, you are going to get the recording. Okay. But uh, for the Saturday, uh, you were saying that it is little difficult because of me alone attending the class. Is that right? Mm, no. Your last statement was again breaking. Sure. No. Last no, statement. Uh, what I'm saying is. 
it, it'll be me alone this early on Saturday. You know, all those people are joining, basically. You know, that's the disadvantage, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Um, I know it will be one-on-one -on -one session kind of thing. Okay. No, really, it will be uh, not too interesting, or uh, even by the end of the day, you won't get uh, much take home. If you see the ah, I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. So, so in this, so you're saying this is how the regular say, or you have another? You're gonna explain on sit for four hours if it is Saturday the long. Yeah, if it is uh, only a weekend, it will be a mm. uh, minimum of uh, two, maximum of three hours. So not more than that, yeah. I won't prefer because I don't think so in a day, if I teach you four hours, the first two hours will be very much uh, concentrated and after that, forcefully, you will sit in front of. Uh, computer. I don't think so. It will be yeah. you know, feeding into your brain. I agree. I agree. I agree. That's what I said, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, getting everything in and digesting, you know, will be difficult. I agree. Mm -hmm. So altogether, it will be uh, three, a minimum two, and maximum three. So like that. For each weekend, you'll be having six to maximum seven hours. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's yeah. depend ways to get uh, extended the topics. So minimum four weekends or maximum five. Yes. So you know, okay. we are going to complete the patch. Nice. Okay. Now uh, once we you're done, I think we, you know how much you spend time in really working on labs, I guess. That will change everything. Okay. See, obviously, initial assignment will take uh, some uh, time to you know cope up with the technology. So once the assignment one is over, so after that you can play around with the tool. Yeah. So that's always in any technology, not only for Hana, right? <laughs> it's just that, you know finding ways around and understanding things. Mm. Yeah. And to remember, that's, uh, you know, you will accomplish, but you know we have to remember. Uh, that's so this slide is not updated because uh, the option for ERP customers just recently, uh, three weeks back, we got this option. So mm -hmm. that's the reason still. So I thought of updating and uh, I'm forgetting every time. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, that's it, Raja. So can you let me know your time? So if it is a daily, we are going to start in the next week. So once you confirm, so, so that when, uh, when every Monday, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Thursday, Friday, correct? Five days. Yeah, it's so a five days. Five business uh, days for you. I mean, in US, <coughs> you need to follow your US timings. <coughs> yeah. Because so when I will you say confirm. Monday, well, yeah. hmm. so I'll when you confirm say with for the, you. Yeah, please go ahead. I'll confirm by email, I said. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, uh, either, uh, so who is uh, the guy interacting with you from this? Uh, uh, he's David or Dilip, whatever he is. Okay. So, even uh, you can uh, loop him and uh, while mailing me the confirmation, you can uh, keep them CC so that uh, those guys will be aware. Yeah. Yeah, no issues. Now, uh, well, these documents should I can I be able to browse or you know, things like that? No, so no. that uh, you know. Probably after some time, I'm going to send you. Uh, you